could have the greatest piece of hardware in the entire world, but if you've got nothing to run on it, it's almost completely useless. I've said this time and time and time again, content is king. Why do you think Apple products do so well? Because they've got such a huge amount of content you can have, and all the Android devices, of course, are fast catching up amongst the other developers, of course, in terms of hardware. So, what about content development? Anybody can do it at the end of the day, it just takes an idea. That's where like, something like GDG DevFest comes into play. It's a community for people to get together to share ideas. As they say, two heads are better than one, or in this case, a whole community is better than one. We spoke to two people heavily involved in this to just really understand about developing content locally and globally. The main objective of this event is to bring together developers and also bring together uh, Google Developer Advocates. Uh, they are the developer from the developer relations team to come to Malaysia and share their knowledge with the developers in Malaysia about Google APIs, Google technologies, and what it's all about. Global domination is always good. So, so when a developer start building a product, uh, they should think about how to dominate the world with their small little application or services. And um, the platform or the thing that uh, what I'm doing, trying to do over here, uh, is try to encourage them to be more confident of what they're doing, to be confident on uh, what who they are, not to be too much introvert. Uh, and also to learn how to communicate with other developers at the same time with other business people or entrepreneurs about their ideas, their aspirations. So it's kind of like uh, one step before they actually go out. So for me at least, I think the first step will be building your own confidence, then build your idea and start walk out there and then dominate the world. Being Asian, we are cultured differently and uh, the way we are being taught is that failure is dangerous. If you fail, you're dead. But in the Western world, if you fail, it's something they celebrated over a party. That's why uh, most developers were like, you can put an example, uh, say Mark Zuckerberg or even Larry Page and Sergey Brin. When they build Google, they just quickly put it out there and they don't care I mean, not to say they don't care, but just they, what they do care is what kind of change they can bring to the world. And they have that confidence built in inside them. To talk about innovation in terms of technology, we are at par. As Malaysian, I think that we are at par in terms of knowledge, even capturing the technology itself. But we are not at par in terms of our interpersonal skills with the rest of the world. So I think that's the one that they need to work on instead of, you know, Cashing in too much on, uh, you know, chasing the win of you know the next technology, but they're not cashing on the right thing, the fundamentals of being a, you know, true innovator. Yeah, yeah, it's getting stronger. It's getting there, and even from Google, it's just getting there step by step. It's not something that uh, Google can actually just boom. Uh, I can just do it in Malaysia. Boom, I can just do it in Japan. Boom, I can do it in Alaska or whatnot. So they have to actually study how the ecosystem works, maybe they have some, for, for instance, I have an example, why Malaysian developers cannot sell their Android applications overseas. So one of the reasons is that uh, Google Wallet has to go through certain regulations and also Google Wallet are trying to test uh, the product itself, the Google Wallet product in the market that they're familiar with, which is the US. So they want to do that first and once they know, the, once they discover the kings and solve the kings, then they try to spread it across all other countries. When it comes to Malaysia, we have a lot of bank banking regulations, we have a lot of this, so they have to go through all those processes and developers have to be slightly patient, uh, you know, how to get their, developer, uh, their apps out there. So it's a matter of time and it's a matter of patience. Of course, there's a lot of other alternatives that you can try to make money from app development. It's, it's definitely a strong trend. I would say it's, it's never been a better time to be a developer than today. And not only has it never been a better time to be a developer for your own projects, it's never been a better time to make your projects self-sustaining. 
to make your own company, to make your own startup. We have so many role models and mentors, like you mentioned, the, the big ones in Silicon Valley, but there's people all over the world that are able to quit their day job and make a living full time um, developing on software, developing on Google platforms. Um, it's a really great time. There's so many platforms, and there's so many different ways that people can make money off of these platforms, um, and there's so many different ways that they can get their apps into the hands of end users. Uh, that I would say that if you're interested in it, it just takes hunger. Uh, it just takes wanting to change the world, wanting to get your idea into the, literally the hands, into the, the tablets and the phones of people around the world. Uh, we can't do that alone though. I mean, there's too much information in the world for us to be able to do it alone. We need the help of developers. We need the help of users all around the world, which is why we're excited to come to places like Kuala Lumpur. There's no way we could possibly get all of the information that anybody in Kuala Lumpur would want to access on our own. So the fact that local developers see a need and can write an app or write a website or write an application that exposes this information to more people really makes us excited. I would say one of the biggest challenges facing common developers today is user interface and user experience. Developers tend to have really good technical ideas, but if you've ever seen an application that's developed purely by a developer, it looks, it looks kind of bad. And so I think one of the challenges today is to pair up traditional developers with people who have more design sense and the merger of those two, I think, will really let the next million or the next 10 million people use this information, use these applications successfully. That's a challenge not only within Google, it's a challenge throughout the developer world. Innovation comes from everywhere in the world. I think innovation comes, it comes from having and identifying a problem and having a clever solution to it. And that's certainly not limited to just the West. Um, so Google has always, from its very beginning, opened engineering offices around the world. We obviously have a very large engineering office in the United States, multiple, but we have engineering offices everywhere. And we know we have engineering offices everywhere because we know talent isn't just limited to one particular area of the world. And some of our best products and ideas have come from, from all over the world. So I, I would say, I, I would say it's not an East versus West thing. I would say innovation is happening at a, a ground, you know, just a tremendous price everywhere in the world. I would say any, any traditional graphic designer who has an eye for the visual language of interfaces can learn to, to develop a UX or a UI design. Um, it takes a different level of thinking. Um, if you're a graphic designer that's used to designing, say, billboards or magazines, something that's static, it takes a little bit of, of thinking about how the user will interact with your piece. Um, but you already have a great head start in the sense that you have a great visual language. You understand colors and you understand shapes and you understand how the human mind and the human operates. So I would say, yes, they can certainly learn to be great user interface designers.